We all have secrets. Some of us are able to tell them to our closest friends. Some of us tell no one at all. Investigators believe that Dylan Redwine discovered his father's disgusting secret and this caused his untimely demise. Dylan Redwine was born February 6, 1999 to his parents Mark and Elaine. He also has an older brother named Corey and two other half-siblings from Mark's previous marriage. Elaine and Mark were in the process of a custody battle in 2012 after being married for 18 years and then divorced. Dylan was a normal 12-year-old boy. He loved to play sports and he was on the school's baseball team. He also admired his brother Corey and the two were very close. His family would play cards together and Dylan was very much loved by Elaine and Corey. At this time, Elaine was living in Colorado Springs, Colorado, and Mark lived in Bayfield, Colorado. So they lived about five miles apart from each other. Before Elaine moved to Colorado Spring, the couple shared custody of Dylan 50-50, but because of the distance, he mainly lived with Elaine. Dylan would visit his father, but only because of court-ordered visitations. Bayfield is a very small town with not much to do, and Mark really wouldn't spend much time with Dylan while he was there. On November 17, 2012, Dylan was to take a flight to go visit his father for the weekend, but that was canceled and so he went November 18th instead. He was flown to the Durango, Colorado airport. His father picked him up there and they then went to Walmart and then McDonald's. There is surveillance footage of Dylan at the airport and Walmart, as well as text messages with his mother confirming that Mark did pick him up. There is no footage or receipts of the McDonald's visit. Dylan was a bit of a night owl, and on the nights where he didn't have school the next morning, he would stay up till around 11 p.m. or midnight and text with his friends, and he received a text message from his mom around 9.30, and he texted her back around 9.37. And she thought it was a bit odd because Dylan normally stays up late and texts back and forth and he's always on his phone, especially when he's at his father's house. But this would be the last time that she ever heard from Dylan was at 9.37 p.m. Because this last text message is the last we heard from Dylan, we only have Mark's recollection of what happened the next day. On November 19th at around 7.30 a.m., Mark says he tried to wake up Dylan, but he wouldn't get up. So Mark left him at home and left to run some errands in Durango. Mark went to his lawyer's office and to his job's payroll office. Mark arrived home at around 11.30 a.m. and he noticed Dylan was not home. Mark said he did not worry because he thought Dylan might be playing with his friend Tristan. He woke up about an hour later and saw that Dylan was still not there. At this point, Mark was a little bit worried about Dylan and he drove to Tristan's house, which was about six miles away from Mark's home. Mark believed that Dylan walked six miles to his friend's house. Tristan told Mark that he had texted Dylan several times that morning, but received no response. Mark then visited an unnamed friend of Dylan's and asked him if he had seen Dylan that day, and that friend told Mark that he you know, had not seen Dylan that day, that he hadn't talked to him. So then Mark messages Elaine, texts her, and asks her if she had seen or heard from Dylan. She was distraught and obviously confused because there was a five-hour drive between them. So how would she have seen Dylan? Especially since Mark claimed he was only gone about an hour that morning. Elaine then alerts the police. Then her and Corey make the five-hour drive to Bayfield. They arrive that evening and police have already started searching the area. Police at this point believe it is just a runaway case that Dylan ran away from home because he didn't like being around his father. But Elaine and Corey knew something was wrong immediately because they knew it wasn't in Dylan's character to run away from home. Police searched Mark's home for any evidence or clues to where Dylan would have gone and noticed that his black backpack he traveled with and his cell phone was gone. The cell phone company was contacted to pull any text that Dylan may have sent. Dylan was supposed to hang out with his friends that day, so his phone was receiving text messages as early as 6.30 a.m., but Dylan never answered. The GPS services were not turned on, so the police were not able to locate him or the phone. Police still believe that Dylan ran away, but just in case of any foul play, they decided to give Mark, Elaine, and Corey a polygraph test to ask questions about Dylan's whereabouts. Mark was the only one to not pass. Polygraphs can be wrong sometimes, but they can also help with investigations as well, 
so police offered to give Mark another polygraph test, but he refused to take another one. Over the following weeks, the community came together and helped Elaine and Corey search for Dylan. They searched local forests. They even searched the Vallecito Lake, which was very close to Mark's home. Cadaver dogs picked up a scent near the lake, so the diver teams decided to search. This was a huge challenge because the divers could only be underwater for about 30 minutes at a time and only once a day because of the cold water because this was taking place in the middle of the winter. Because it was a struggle for the divers to search for Dylan because of the cold weather, the FBI brought in a sonar system on a boat that was able to search the water to see if anything could be located, but unfortunately they did not find Dylan. After months of searching, Mark, Elaine, and Corey, and Mark's ex-girlfriend went on Dr. Phil. Mostly there was a lot of finger pointing between Mark and Elaine, because at this point there was no evidence found of any kind. Mark felt that Elaine may have something to do with it, and Elaine felt the same way. This is when Mark publicly started stating that he felt as if Dylan may have been abducted on the way to his friend's house, or maybe a wild animal attacked him. He also made the claim that Elaine had dangerous criminal friends and they may have helped her abduct Dylan and she was hiding him. Frankly, the entire show was very frustrating to watch because of the editing that Dr. Phil's team did. They made it seem like either parent could be guilty and the way Dr. Phil was talking to both parents, it did really seem as if either one of them could have done it. But Corey was able to speak his piece and state that Mark had not attended any of the candlelight vigils, any of the community searches, anything to really help look for Dylan. So this really made him look bad on public television that he had not done anything to search for his son. And I will say it was very cringy and uncomfortable when Mark's ex-girlfriend was on there. She was not present at the studio. They like phoned her in and she was just talking, saying that Mark was a great guy and that she spent some time with him and Dylan previously before her and Mark stopped seeing each other. And it just seemed as if maybe her and Mark had something still going on because she was talking very highly of him. Or, you know, maybe he offered to do something for her if, you know, she talked highly of him. Uh, because she made it seem like Dylan and Mark got along great and Corey and Elaine would say something completely different, that they didn't get along and that the two argued all the time and that... Mark was not really that nice to Dylan and Dylan didn't like to go visit with him. So seems a little bit weird that she would sit there and say that they got along great. And of course, just knowing someone and seeing someone for a few days does not give you the broad scope of who they are as a person. And it also doesn't really show the genuine nature of a relationship if these two people actually get along, if the father and son actually got along. So I really thought that it was a little bit odd that they had her on there because really who cares what she thinks she only dated Mark a few months but I did think it was a little bit odd the way she was praising Mark so much. In June of 2013 a search team found Dylan's partial remains. They were found about 10 miles away from Mark's home and in November 2015 Dylan's skull was found by hikers about a mile and a half away from the other remains. The hikers were walking along a trail and they happened to see a human skull so they contacted the authorities and FBI came and were able to determine that this was Dylan's skull. This confirmed Mark's beliefs that an animal had attacked Dylan. A wildlife expert worked with the FBI and determined that no animal in the area would have attacked Dylan and taken him over 10 miles away from Mark's home nor would have taken Dylan's skull over a mile away from the rest of his body. This case was immediately turned into a homicide investigation. The investigators started to look deep into Mark's whereabouts the day Dylan went missing. The FBI made Mark a person of interest in 2015, mainly because of the early discoveries made about him. On August 5, 2013, cadaver dogs picked up Dylan's scent in the living room of Mark's home, as well as his washing machine. On February 13, 2014, police again had the cadaver dogs search Mark's home and found Dylan's scent inside of his truck, as well as the bed of his truck. Dylan's remains were found near Middle Mountain Road, which was very close to Mark's home, and this is a road that he took very often, so he would be very familiar with the area. 
Investigators at this point started to believe that Mark may have killed Dylan in his home and then dumped the body off in the forest, thinking that nobody would look through there and that he took Dylan's skull elsewhere after the body started to decay, that he may have moved it after the murder because there was an indent on the skull that looked as if it may have been hit with a sharp tool after the um, murder had happened and after the body had been sitting a while. So they believe that he moved it after um, he was there for a little while. The FBI also found traces of blood on Mark's couch and love seat, his coffee table, and the carpet. The blood samples were examined and determined to belong to Dylan. Mark at this point said he was not concerned with being a person of interest, mainly because he didn't know what that meant. <laughs> the last and probably most disturbing reason why Mark was considered a person of interest at this point was sometime, we don't have an exact date unfortunately, but sometime before Dylan went missing, him and Corey stumbled across some pictures in their house and they were immediately shocked. And these pictures are highly disturbing so I can't put them in the video and you know they're out on the internet if you care to look them up. I accidentally stumbled across them by doing research for this video and they are quite disgusting and hard to look at and once you see them that image is like forever like burned into your brain so definitely be cautious if you do choose to look at them but the images are of Mark wearing like a full face of women's makeup and wearing a diaper and he is eating feces out of another diaper so keep that in mind if you do choose to look these up because they're really quite disgusting and we know that Dylan didn't really like spending time with Mark, right? It, his visits were court ordered. He didn't really want to go there because it was so far away, probably from like all of his friends and his mom and brother. And Mark just really didn't seem like he did a lot to be close with Dylan. And he just didn't really like going, which is completely understandable. And so it's believed that Dylan maybe was going to confront Mark and say something about these pictures and ask him like, what are you doing? What are these? And you know, not really understanding why his father would do that, especially at a young age like that, that would be absolutely shocking. Like I couldn't even imagine seeing something like that when I was 12 years old. And so I do feel like that Dylan was confronting his father and saying something about it and Mark's temper just rose above and he just couldn't handle it. And you know, eventually snapped and killed Dylan. So it's believed that Dylan did confront his father about these and he just went nuts and killed him. Mark was arrested in Washington while working as a truck driver in July 2017 for second degree murder and child abuse resulting in death. He was transferred back to Colorado at the La Planta County Jail. He pled not guilty at his initial hearing. This trial has been put off several times. It was supposed to start September 17, 2019, but Mark's defense attorney was arrested for domestic violence. After the charges were dropped, he did not show up for two court hearings, so Mark was appointed new lawyers and they needed time to work out this case and work out a new defense. The trial was again put off from its April 2nd, 2020 date due to COVID, but it has finally taken place in June of 2021. Mark's defense team argued that Dylan was killed by wildlife and that Mark had nothing to do with it. And the wildlife expert as well as forensic specialists argued that there's no way that any animal in this area could have done that to Dylan, could have taken him 10 miles from where he was and taken his skull that far. So it was determined that Mark did in fact kill Dylan and he was charged with second degree murder as well as child abuse. So we have not heard um, about any additional charges or we have not heard about what his actual sentencing could be. That is going to be due in October so we will definitely keep an eye out for that and if you want me to do any sort of like update video I can definitely do that. Um, but he is looking most likely at decades in prison and Mark is currently 59 years old so most likely he will either be extremely old or he will most likely die in prison. Mark also chose not to testify which I found very interesting because they had three weeks of testimonies from several different specialists 
And I just found it very interesting that he chose not to go up there because he's claimed that he is innocent this entire time and he's denied anything to do with Dylan's disappearance even after he was convicted. So let me know what you guys think about this case in the comments. I found it really interesting and it was a very long time coming because I remember years ago watching that episode on Dr. Phil and that was like right around the time when I just started getting into true crime. So I was like just hearing about this case and I really didn't know hardly anything about it and I hadn't heard anything about it in so long. So it was really interesting to hear that Mark was finally convicted just this past week at the time of me posting this. But I just, I found it really sad and I really feel like investigators did Elaine a big disservice by taking so long to make Mark a person of interest. To me, when they searched his home just a few months after uh, Dylan's disappearance, um, I almost said Corey, um, right after Dylan's disappearance and they didn't really question him, they didn't, um, you know, arrest him or anything like that, I found it really sad because I feel like they did a big disservice to this case by letting it go on for so long. And considering that the remains were found so close to Mark's home, I just find it very odd that they didn't find them for so long because it wouldn't have just been bones for that long you would have seen you know a body decomposing so I just found that very sad and um, you know I feel bad for Elaine and Corey that they did such a big disservice to her by not um, convicting Mark or not um, looking at him closer you know and I think that's just because Colorado is a very very like liberal state and so they try not to put it on one person right away they are a little bit more easygoing when it comes to crimes but I just found it very sad that this happened and you know I just feel really bad for Elaine and Corey and the rest of their family so but let me know what you guys think about this case if you thought it was interesting if there are any other true crime cases that you want me to do a deep dive in please let me know in the comments and I will definitely add it to my list of ones that I would like to do so otherwise I hope you all have a great day and stay safe out there Bye bye